Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to continue our journey on creating our basic dice game for AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming. We've currently covered 3.1, 3.2 which was variables and data abstraction. In this video, we're talking about Big Idea 3.3, which is mathematical expressions, and Big Idea 3.4, which is talking about strings. Here is what we're gonna build out, and we're gonna, we're gonna build some stuff that fits to these two big ideas today, but let's look at these big ideas. This is 3.3, mathematical expressions for AP Computer Science Principles. Let's look at this. The way statements are sequenced and combined in a program to determine the computed result. Programs incorporate iteration and selection constructs to represent reputation and make decisions to handle varied input values. You're gonna see this enduring understanding for all of these big ideas. Here's the actually learning objections for 3.3. Express an algorithm that uses sequencing without using programming language. An algorithm is a finite set of instructions that accomplish a special task. So they want us to build an algorithm that has a sequence of instructions. When you think about algorithm, just think about recipe. It's a recipe following all of the steps. If you scroll down some more, again, you should read through these as well, because that is what will be on the AP Computer Science Principles exam at the end of the year. Represent a step-by-step -step algorithmic process using se sequential code statements. And again, you can see what sequencing is. You can see all of these things. Make sure that you know that. If we keep going down, evaluate expressions that use arithmetic operators. So again, this is mathematical expressions. We want to add some math into our basic dice game. And again, you want to look at these here. And you can see these are going to be some of the type of questions you may see on the AP Computer Science Principles exam at the end of the year. So this is 3.3. They want us to build an algorithm. They want us to use some math. And that will cover 3.3 mathematical expressions. Let's look at 3.4. 3.4 is strings. We've used strings before um, throughout this entire year when we're displaying results to a user or we're updating something. And those are strings, which are just text. If you're looking at this, again, this stays the same. Here is the learning objective for 3.4. Evaluate expressions that manipulate strings. String concatenation joins together two or more strings end to end to make a new string. A substring is a part of an existing string. Again, you should know those two things, but we're going to do that. We've done that in the past with our join statement. So what were we trying to accomplish here? 3.3, we want to add math with an algorithm with a bunch of steps in it. 3.4, we want to make sure that we join some strings together, which is called concatenation. So over here, back on our page, here's what we're doing for 3.3 and 3.4, we're doing dice sum and the dice rule screen. So here's the dice rule screen. We're gonna give everybody that so they can know how to play game. And then we're gonna update some stuff in here. We're gonna make an algorithm that calculates the money that you win or you lose, which has math in it. Uh, we're also going to update the sum is eight. We're gonna use math to get these two numbers and just update this with the string we're going to concatenate it to say the sum is and give that value so that's what we're going to do it's going to be a really quick video and the next video which is talking about conditionals we're going to cover the dice rules and 3.7 is nested conditionals which is an if inside of an if we're going to finish out this game so for this now, this is going to be a quick video on making another screen just to give the user the dice rules. And we're going to handle an algorithm with money and the sum. So let's get started. Here we are on our basic dice. You can see we had, we created the button before. We have play game. We have this. And let's refresh this so you can actually see it. I'm going to connect my emulator. So here you can see we have our basic dice game. Now, dice rules, we're gonna do that in this game. When we click on it, nothing happens, we're gonna cover that. We did fix play game though. So you can see here's the codes that we created in the past. We're gonna modify these a little bit today. And here's our screen. So if I click on roll them, remember we added some sound effects with the list for data abstraction from 3.2. You can hear the dice shaking. You can see these are updating and the current roll is updating. You see it says three. Yeehaw. 
we're going to update the sum. The sum is actually not right. If you look at this, this right here, this should be, the sum is 10. This never updates. So we're going to update with that. So that's where we're going to go. Let's first go back to screen one and let's work on this dice rule screen. So we're going to come back here. We're going to go to our button dice rules. I'm going to pull this out. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did down here. Let's use our text to speech. Let's put in some text. And down here we said, let's play dice to win some real money. Let's put, let's learn how to play dice. Then we want to go open another screen with the screen name. So I'm going to go to control. I'm going to scroll down some. And here it is. Open another screen with the screen name. So I'm going to pull in this one. Let's put text in there. And let's call it dice rules. Now, if I click this, it's going to give me an error because this screen does not exist yet. Remember right now, we only have screen one and play dice. So because the screen doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error. It will speak when I touch this button. So when, when dice rules is clicked, it's going to speak. It's going to try to go to the screen. It's going to give me an error. Let's see. Let's learn how to play dice. It said that, but you can see here, invalid screen, dice rules. That means I do not have that screen created. So let's do that. Make sure you type it exactly the same way. So I'm just going to copy that and click on add and paste that in and click OK. So that created my dice rules screen. I'm going to go back to screen one. Now, if I click on this, I'm just showing you the code. Go to dice rules. Let's learn how to play dice. So you can see that gets me back to this dice rules place. So let's go ahead and design this. Now to design this, let's go back to our class page. We have this little image and we have a little background. We have the home button and we have the play dice button. You can see I'm going to need some media. I need the home icon and I also need this image here. I give you that here inside of media needed. So you can go ahead and download these two things. I already have them. So let's come over here. Now, first thing I want you to notice, if you come back over here, we're making this screen sideways. We've not done this before, but you can force the screen to be portrait versus landscape. So if we come back over here to make this, if we look at the properties for our screen, or again, right here on our screen, you know the top we want to change. We don't want it to say dice rules. We've done this before. Let's give it a space. So dice rules. And I think we called it basic dice. So basic dice rules. Now, screen orientation says unspecified, so it'll be the default, but I can force it to be portrait, always, or landscape. And so you can see over here, it looks weird, and I could rotate the screen, and that would make it in my emulator. But this is saying I only want this screen to be landscape, and that's what we're going to do for this, just to show you a little bit different. So our background image, we already have that. I'm just going to do casino background. Now, if we look at this over here, we have an image in the middle. We have a horizontal arrangement at the top with a button and our home image in there. So let's go ahead and pull in the horizontal arrangement. I'm going to make the screen none. Come back up here. I'm going to put my image in there, which is going to be IMG home. I'm going to make it clickable. And I'm going to upload the picture that we just downloaded, which is our home icon. Now that's way too big. So let's make it something like 30 pixels for the height and 30 pixels for the width. And I'll do scale picture to fit. Now next to that, we want a button. This is going to be, if you look back at it, BTM play dice. So we're going to give them a button to get them straight to go playing dice after they read the rules. So BTN play dice. Again, you can fit this however you want. I'm just going to match kind of the picture and it's yellow. I'm going to say play dice. I'm going to make this rounded. I might make this a little bit bigger and bold. So there you go. Another thing we need is a image underneath it. 
Now this image is going to be the dice rules image that you just downloaded. So I'm going to upload that. So there we go. And so you can see this really big. Let's just make this like, let's use percent here. And let's say, let's say 75% for the width and height. Let's just see how that looks. So there we go. Only thing I really need to do is I want to center my layout here. So I'm going to do a line horizontal center and let's refresh our screens doing some weird stuff here. So for this, let's go back to automatic scale and let's say 90% for the width, not 90 pixels, 90% to make sure you do the right one. Uh, that's a little too much. Let's say 80%. So there you go. So that is that. We haven't coded it, but let's also add in, as always, let's add in our text to speech. So this screen is pretty much done. We need to code our home button. We need to code our play dice button, and we can use text to speech. Let's come over here. Let's do our home button really simple. And I did not name that, which I should have. This should be IMG dice rules so I know what that is inside of here let's go to our home button pull this out and what we're going to simply do is go to control and pull in our text now to go home we want to make sure we type it just like this screen one capital S screen one really simple button play dice same thing Pull in our another screen, put in our text. We want to type exactly like this. Play dice with a capital P and D. Play dice. Now, as always, we like to speak. So let's put some speaking in there. And let's just say ready to play dice. And over here, let's just put one up here. And let's just say going home. So those two pretty much done. If we wanted to, we could turn this to clickable, make sure clickable is on. And if someone clicks on this image, let's just speak and we'll say, these are the dice rules. Are you ready to play? So I'll come back over here to this and let's rotate this a little bit more. There we go. So everything on here should work. And we can go over to our play dice game now and work on a mathematical algorithm that'll work with our money. But let's just test out the dice rules screen. So on here. These are the dice rules. These are the dice rules. If I click, are you ready to play? And you can see I'm going to click on home. It took me home. If I click back on dice, Let's learn how to play dice, that works. If I click on this play dice button, ready to play dice. And here you go. Now again, I can rotate this. Now let me show you. This screen didn't automatically rotate, so let's just change the screen orientation to portrait. Also, what you did not notice is we don't have a home button here, so we need to add that. And we're going to add that up here with our money. So what we're going to do first, let's add in our home button. Pull this in there. Horizontal arrangement. Let's make that with fill parent. Let's go ahead and put in our image inside of here on the left side. We're going to rename that IMG home. We already uploaded the picture we just did. So I'm just going to select that. And again, let's make it 30 pixels by 30 pixels and I'll make it clickable and scale. Now for this, I'm just gonna get rid of this background. And actually, you know what? Let's make the background the same color as the money. So I'm gonna make the horizontal arrangements background color, that kind of dark gray. So there you go. All right, so we just need to code this guy and then we can navigate around. Really simple image and I can pull this out, but Let's use the backpack. Remember the backpack, you can copy code from other screens. So just like this is gonna take us home, we can actually come over here to our dice rules. 
we have an image home saying going home and it has this. I'm just going to simply drag this and put it in our backpack. So now that code is saved and I can pull it out on the other screen. So if I go back to play dice, I have an image home and I can simply pull this out. Now here's the issue. When you're doing pulling out code, you got to make sure you have all the stuff named the same and the same components. Right here, it's saying component does not exist. What does that mean? That means if I look over here, I do not have text to speech. We did not add it to our play dice game. So let's just simply add that and drag this in. And if we go back over here, the error disappears. So now we should be good. All right. So now our this works. Home. Going home, I can go to dice rules. Dice. You can see it forces it to be this way, right? Then I can click on home. home. I can Let's go. Let's learn how to play dice. Ready to play dice. And you can see there we go. All right. So let's knock out this tutorial. Let's work with our 3.3 and our 3.4. Right now, really simple. Let's work on the die sum. So we have a die one, a die two. We just want to get the total of those with this math, and then display it displayed here that says the sum is 10 and remember from 3.4 strings it wants us to concatenate strings this is a concatenation I'm using the sum is I'm gonna add in a number that's just like we did here with these join statements so let's do that let's make a simple procedure this procedure all the content is done inside of it but you can make a procedure that simply returns a number in this instance, we're going to make a procedure called dice sum, and it's going to return these two values added together. We're going to call that a lot actually in our final app. So we're going to make a very simple procedure. Let's click on procedures. Again, this is the type of procedure where you do the steps or algorithms inside of it. This is the procedure where you're going to simply return something. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to call it dice sum. Now what I want is to return die one plus die two. You can see I have a result here. You can have more than one statement in here, but we just need adding these two values. So I'm going to go to math. I'm going to pull in this plus sign. And now I just need to get my two variables. So I'm going to go to variables. I'm going to pull in this and I'm going to do die one. Go to variables. I'm going to pull in this and die two. So whenever I call this, it will give me whatever die one is plus die two. And that is our sum down here. And I simply want to update this sum. So I need to grab that label. Remember, this is a label down here. We typed it into this value, which is for text. Remember your properties values you can update inside of App Inventor. They are the green blocks. So I'm going to go to this label sum and I want to update this property. So I'll come here. I'm going to find my label sum. Here's our green blocks. I'm looking for text. You can see there's a light green one, which means I want to get the text. The text currently is the sum is 10. I don't want to get that. I want to change it. So the dark green one is here. Label sum set text to we'll pull that here. Now here's what 3.4 was talking about. Concatenation, joining two strings together. I don't just want to put the dice sum in here. Because if I do, it's just going to say 10. And let me show you that. I click on procedures and I put dice sum inside of the sum. I'm going to lose this first part. The sum is. So let me just click on roll. So you can see 5 plus 5 is 10. If I can roll again, six, 5 plus 3 is 8. So I'm just getting 8, which doesn't make sense. So I want to perform a string concatenation. That's what we're using when we do our join statement. So I'm going to go to join text, pull in my join. I'm going to put the number as the second part. I'm going to put text in front and I'm going to say the sum is with a space. Now, if I do this, you can see the sum is eight, four plus four. Four plus two, the sum is six. 
So really simple with one little procedure that we've made and some string concatenation, we have updated that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make a procedure that updates the display. You can see we're doing all these updates to labels here inside of roll die. Let's just make a simple one place procedure, update display to user. I'm gonna pull in all of my updating of the display. So this is updating the image, this is updating the image. I'm also gonna pull in, sorry, I'm gonna pull in these guys. And I got one more, so I'm gonna move this up and then I'm going to pull in my current role. So inside of my update display to user, I'm updating the label current role, which is that. I'm updating the label die one and die two, which we still have in there. We're not showing it, they're hidden. So we actually could just disable these guys. And I'm gonna double click it to hide them. We have our two images that we're updating and we're updating the label sum. So we have now this procedure called update display to user. Instead of my roll die, all I'm doing is rolling a die. I'm updating the values and I now simply need to call update display to user. And there you go. Now we should test to make sure that it still works. So you can see this is now working. All right, last part, remember 3.3. Mathematical expressions, it wants us to build a procedure that has a sequence of steps and also uses mathematical functions. We're actually already using math right here, but this is just one step. We actually want to build a sequence of steps. So we're going to deal with this up here, our money. We're not coming up with the dice rules right now and actually full-fledged game. We'll do that in the next video, which 3.6 conditionals and 3.7, which is nested conditionals. We're gonna finish this out. But right now, let's just create the structure for us to win or lose money. Remember back on our unplugged activity, if we go look at that. When I was teaching you how to play dice before we actually made this dice game, we had certain rules. And you can see here are, if you went on the first roll, you win $20. If you win after the first roll, you win $10. If you lose, you win $5. So let's come up with this in a procedure. That way it can update our money when we do build out our full game. All right, so to do that, first thing we're gonna need is variables, which is 3.1. We need a variable to hold our money. So I'm gonna pull out a variable and call it money, and let's make it $100. Now, let's make a procedure and let's just call it update money. And pull this out and let's call update money. Now to update the money, we need to know if the player wins or loses. So we're gonna need input. So I'm gonna click on the little blue settings. Any block that has a blue settings block in MIT App Inventor, you can add or modify that block. Right now we have no inputs. So I'm simply want one. I'm gonna drag this from the left and connect it there. And inside of here, I'm gonna say player wins. So if the player wins, then we will do those certain rules or else we'll take $5 away from the total. So we're gonna need an if statement. Now, conditionals and if statements are the next unit, which is 3.6, but follow along with me here. We're gonna use 3.6 to really come up with the dice rules and finish out the game. So we're gonna need a conditional, which is an if statement. I'm gonna say if, the player wins. Now if we go back to our unplugged activity, the player can win in two locations. They can win on the first roll, he wins $20, or after the first roll, he wins $10. So we're gonna do a nested conditional. Again, that is 3.7 for AP Computer Science Principles, but follow along for now. We're gonna use 3.6 and 3.7 to actually finish out this game. So if the player wins, there's two things that can happen. I'm gonna need another if statement inside of there. I need to know if it's the first roll, because again, if we look back here, if it's the first roll, they win $20. If it's after the first roll, they win $10. So if, and remember up here, we have 
a variable called current role. So again, this shows the importance of having variables and making sure those variables are named accurately. So I'm gonna to go to math, I'm gonna pull in my block here, go to my variables, I'm gonna say if the current role is equal to one. If the current role is equal to one, what do I wanna do? I wanna add 20 to our money. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go back to math. I'm gonna come back up here. This time I'm gonna get whatever my money is and I'm gonna add, go to math. And I'm gonna put $20 in there. So inside of here, if the player wins, inside of that, I know the player is one. If the current roll is one, add $20 to it. Our other thing is, after the first roll, they won $10. So inside of here, I'm gonna click on this blue settings, click on else, and I'm just gonna duplicate this block and change this to 10. So let's read this so you can understand that. If the player wins, if it's the current roll, they win $20 or else they win $10. So this is a nested conditional. And again, we'll go over more of this in 3.7 when we finish out this basic dice game. So that's handling the winning. And as you can see, we have a sequence of steps, which was 3.3, have a sequence of steps, that includes arithmetic operators. That's what we currently have. We have a sequence of steps that has arithmetic operators. Now we have to handle lose. Over here on our unplug activity, if you lose, you just simply lose what you bet, which is $5 a game. So I'm going to, if I don't win, I lose. So if player wins is all this or else you lose. So I'm going to click on this little blue settings icon, pull this out and down here, let's just go money. I'm going to go to math. I'm going to get my subtract signed. I'll get my money out and we're going to subtract $5. There you go. So this is a sequence of steps that uses arithmetic operators. That's what 3.3 mathematical expressions is all about. 3.4 strings was about string concatenation and we're doing that a bunch of times inside of here. So let's test out update money. We're normally gonna update the money inside of check win or lose, which we will build in the next video, which is 3.6 conditionals. But for right now, let's just say every time we play, we're gonna subtract $5. So I'm gonna do procedures, update money. Did the player win? For right now, we don't have a way of checking that. So I'm just gonna say false. Now, when we update the money, we need to update this label, right? You can see the label is right here, LBL money. Again, it is a text property. And we're gonna use string concatenation on that. So I'm gonna click on LBL money. And I am going to go to my text. Now, I did update display over here, but since all of our money is here, I can just update it here. Again, it is your preference. I'm gonna do my string concatenation here. Pull in this. This is gonna say money. And I'm going to do a space with a dollar sign. And then I'm simply going to get the money that is left. So now if I press this, right now we're saying we're losing all the time. We're just gonna lose the $5 that we're betting. Um, this should update and I should see this go to $95. Let's see. There's 95. Now we do come to an issue. Let's say we get 
two, five dollars left. If we get to five dollars left, I now have zero. Well, if I click it again, there's nothing, negative five dollars does not exist. So we have to handle this condition as well. And we'll do that real simple. We'll just add another conditional. I'm gonna to go to if. And I'm gonna put it before the label. And what we're gonna check is if, after we update the money, if the money is less than zero dollars, we're just gonna give them another hundred dollars to play with. So I'm gonna go if, I'm gonna to go to my math, I'm gonna pull in this equals, I'm gonna pull in my money. I'm gonna say if it's less than or equal to zero. I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna give them another hundred dollars. But let's tell them that we just did. So let's use our text to speech, pull this in here, put in some text. And what do we wanna say? Let's say you lost all your money, giving you another hundred dollars. All right, so there we go. So now that my money currently is at negative five. If I press this again, this little if statement should kick in and it should speak. It should reset my money to 100 and then this should actually show me a hundred dollars. So let's see. You lost all your money, giving you another $100. So there you go. So now we got five dollars left. If I click it again, you lost all your money. Another one hundred dollars. So let's check something else. Let's check that the winning is happening. So right now, again over here, we're passing in false. So when we come into update money, player wins is false. Does the player win? No. So it comes down here and it subtracts. Let's check inside of here. To do that, I want to check, I want to reset because I want to see if the current roll is one, does it add $20 or else does it add 10? So first let's go to connect. Let's do refresh companion. That way my current roll right now is going to be one. I'm going to change this to true. So I'm saying update money player wins is true. Comes over here. It should do this part of the code. So let's roll. So you can see up here, I got $120 because it was the first roll. If I roll this again, it's no longer the first roll. This is still true. Does the player win? Yes. Is it the first roll? No. Okay, it's not. So add $10. So now I should go to $130. So you can see that's working. And here, if I turn this to false, all right, so that is it for now. We have just covered big idea 3.3 .3, mathematical expressions and big idea 3.4 strings for AP computer science principles, big idea three algorithms and programming. In the next video, we will cover Big Idea 3.6, conditionals, where we'll handle our dice rules, and 3.7, nested conditionals, which we kind of did here, where we will do checking roll one versus the other rolls. We are done for now. Head over to the next video.